Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Kirloskar Oil Engines Limited Q3 FY22 post results call hosted by Antique Stock Broking. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Amit Shah from Antique Stock Broking. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Aman. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the post earnings con call of uh, Kirloskar Oil Engines Limited. Uh, today, from the management, we have with us uh, Ms. Gauri Kirloskar, non executive director, and Mr. Pawan Agarwal, uh, CFO of the company. Uh, I'll hand over the call to Mr. Pawan Agarwal, who will give the opening remarks, post which we can open the floor for Q&A. Uh, over to you, sir. Thanks. Uh, a very good evening to all of you, and thank you very much for taking time and joining this call. Uh, present with me on this call are Ms. Gauri Kriloskar, non-executive director, and a few of my other colleagues, namely Mr. Rahul Prabhudesai, head of strategy and new business initiative, Mr. Arvind Chhabra, head of PPS business unit, and our company secretary, Ms. Smita Rajukar. Mr. Amit Gupta, who leads the corporate finance function at our subsidiary Arca Fintap Limited, has also joined this call from Mumbai. Uh, I hope everyone is staying positive and testing COVID negative. As we all deal with yet another wave of the pandemic, let us hope that this will now transition into an endemic. Also, I would like to wish you all a very happy new year and filled with abundance of good health and prosperity. As you all are aware, Mr. Sanjeev Nimkar, the managing director, resigned from the company with effect from 27th January 2022 due to personal reasons. The board and the entire management team appreciates the contributions made by Sanjeev, and all of us wish him uh, the very best for his future endeavors. While the company is in process of appointing a new professional managing director, upon request of the board, Ms. Kauri Kirloskar, non-executive director of COEL, has kindly agreed to supervise the day-to-day -day operations of the company in the interim under the guidance of Mr. Atul Kirloskar and the board of directors of the company. The board has accordingly extended the term of Mr. Atul Kirloskar as executive chairman from 26 January till 31st March 2023 to aid in this transition. <coughs> Today we are here to talk on the third quarter and the cumulative nine months results for the financial year 2022. While the press release and the earnings call presentation which have been released has the performance details, Nonetheless, I would like to go through the key parameters on financial and business performance of COEL and its subsidiaries. But before that, a customary disclaimer. We wish to start by qualifying that during our call, we may make some forward-looking statements. These statements are considering the business environment we see as of today. And therefore, there could be risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results to vary materially from what we are discussing on the call. And we would not always be able to update on these forward-looking statements. Now coming to the performance, uh, as an overall picture, if you see we have taken a hit on our profitability for this quarter. However, this needs to be viewed in the context of last year numbers, which had lower levels of costs due to variety of cost savings on the backdrop of COVID-19. To give you some examples, uh, restricted movement of our people, significantly lower costs for communication and negligible sales and marketing spend, etc. The other development to touch upon is the overall inflationary environment. The quarter was marked by an increase in prices of raw materials as being witnessed across many industries. The company took necessary price hikes in this quarter as well to mitigate some of the impact of input cost pressures. The compounded impact of all these price increases still could not help us recoup the steep increase in input prices fully. We had informed you in our last financial is quarter three earning calls that uh, COEL had embarked upon a cost optimization exercise and we were able to implement quite a few cost control measures, the impact of those were flowing through into almost entire FY 2021. However, as we have scaled back to normal levels in FY 22, many of these costs have got post corrected in line with the normal scale of business operations. Understandably, therefore, the maintenance of low operating year level is very difficult and as reported earlier, not sustainable. Coming to the revenue side, power generation business delivered 25% growth year on year basis and our exports saw a healthy growth of 60% in quarter three. Extended rains and floods in few pockets, especially in the north, south and eastern region of the country hindered electric and submersible pump business growth in quarter three. 
the other details of the things are captured in the presentation uploaded on the website. Now let's look at our results. On a standalone basis, the total revenue from operations for the third quarter stood close to 837 crore against 798 crore in quarter three of the previous financial year. As mentioned earlier, the general selling and administrative expenses in the current quarter were higher as, compared, as comparable period in the last year was largely affected by COVID and hence the costs were not, a, not at normal levels. EBITDA for the quarter was nearly 51 crore as compared to 94 crore in the same period last financial year. The company delivered PAT of approximately 25 crore in quarter three versus nearly 61 crore during the same period in previous financial year. During the nine month period ended 31st December 2021, uh, revenue from operations grew by almost 30% to uh, rupees 2310 crore, but EBITDA remained at a level of 166 crore due to lower gross profit, higher employee cost and other expenses compared to same period last year. The current year's other expenses also include a one-time expenditure incurred by the company towards the Kirloskar brand refresh program. Consequently, profit after tax for the nine-month period ended 31st December 2021 was approximately 9% lower at 88.5 crore. Most of the business divisions have demonstrated double-digit sales growth in the current year so far. As at the end of uh, December 2021, overall networking capital was maintained at a healthy level of 13 days. Moving on to our subsidiaries, following are uh, some of the key highlights. At Larger Machinery Private Limited, which is LGM standalone, revenue from operations grew from 129 crore to 134 crore in quarter three on a YOY basis. Other than government supplies and OEMs, the other business segments such as retail and exports witnessed sales growth during quarter three. For the nine-month period ended 31st December 2021, revenue from operations grew by nearly 13% to 410 crore. The steep increase in commodity input costs impacted the margins at LGM during the year. Our newly formed step-down subsidiary Optica Pipes and Electricals Private Limited started its commercial operations in May 2021 and for the period ended 31st December 2021, delivered revenue from operations of rupees 25 crore. At Optica, we expect to exit the current financial year with a turnover of approximately 40 crore. As informed in the previous earning call, Optica entered into a joint venture with ISWA Pumps India Private Limited by making an equity investment of 4.41 crore, thereby obtaining 49% stake in the company on 4th October 2021. ISWA Pumps delivered revenue from operations of approximately 25 crore during the period ending 31st December 2021. Kirloskar Americas Corporation, our US-based subsidiary, saw an impact on its revenue in quarter three due to surge of COVID in the Americas region and supply chain and logistic issues. KAC delivered a revenue from operations of rupees 21 crore in the nine month period ended 31st December 2021, compared to approximately 20 crore revenue in the same period last financial year. The key highlights of the financial performance of ARCA FinCap Limited can be seen in quarter three earning call presentation uploaded on the website of the company. As far as consolidated performance of Coil Group is concerned, here are the key points. Revenue from operations grew at 29% year on year at rupees 2,840 crore for the period ended 31st December 2021. EBITDA stood at 269 crore against 240 crore for the nine month period ended 31st December, registering a growth of 12% year on year. Profit after tax for the nine month period ended 31st December 21 hour was at 103 crore, a 14% decline year on year. The board of directors has approved an interim dividend of rupees 1.5 per share, which is 75% on the face value of equity share of rupees 2 each. As far as outlook of COEL standalone is concerned, we are focusing on exiting FY22 with a top line growth of at least 18 to 20% year on year basis. As the commodity prices have been on the rise for past many months and impacted the margins, the company has taken a decision to further hike prices in quarter four of FY 2022 to offset the impact of input cost increase to some extent. However, it would be difficult to pass on the entire input cost increase onto the customers. And therefore, despite our best efforts, we anticipate some impact on EBITDA margin in FY 22 versus FY 21. Uh, it would, however, be difficult to quantify the exact impact on EBITDA margin at this point of time. 
as we are done with uh, as we are done with uh, the number updates i would like to update you all on coel sustainability journey as a group and also as company brand kirloskar is very well known for our community partnerships and environmental friendly operations our manufacturing plant at kagali is already carbon neutral at coel we are focused on all the elements of esg framework from the coming quarters we will update you more on sustainability journey and our company level efforts our goal is to be best in class in this area to conclude uh, i would like to mention that overall the internal and external factors today are challenging for coel but we remain enthusiastic and optimistic about opportunity the efforts of the last many quarters in multiple areas such as new product development productivity gains strengthening and deeper penetration of our brand channel expansion etc coupled with favorable economic environment provide us a great opportunity to scale up the business and enhance the key business and financial performance indicators going forward we are hopeful of a much stronger financial year 2023 as we get closer to exiting the current financial year we believe we are well poised for the better future we have the financial resources in terms of a strong balance sheet and a healthy cash position a great set of products powerful brand and an experienced team to capitalize on these opportunities we continue to evaluate inorganic growth opportunities and as plans turn more concrete it will be presented to the board and also to the investor community now i would request gauri to share her thoughts with all of us uh, uh, and uh, thanks to my side over to you thanks good evening and thank you for participating in this session this is gauri kirloskar This is my first session with you as the director of supervising daily operations of Kirloskar Oil Engines, and I look forward to our interactions on a go-forward basis. First of all, I want to put on record that I am here in the interim to supervise the day-to-day -day operations of the company. Our intent as promoters is that all of our companies must be professionally managed, and that is one of my key priorities: to identify, under the guidance and consultation of the board, a suitable professional who can be appointed as the managing director of Coel. I shall continue to be engaged on a day-to-day -day basis till such a transition is completed. Separately, you may have read the disclosures made by Coel yesterday. My cousin Nihal and his family have expressed their desire to pursue their own independent interests, and accordingly, Nihal has resigned from the board of the Coel Group of Companies and expressed his and his family's intent of eventually exiting as shareholders over a period of time. The board of directors have accepted and taken on record his resignation letter as well as the letter issued by him along with his mother and brother. As my uncle Rahul Kirloskar and my father Atul Kirloskar our chairman have mentioned in their press release this is a very amicable development. We as a fifth generation of the Kirloskar family have always been encouraged to follow our passion and that is what he still is doing. After his father passed away he has and continues to look up to my father and uncle as his father figures and they treat him as one of their own children that relationship continues and we have a nice bond between us cousins as well they are working out the modalities of their exit as shareholders from the companies according to law and applicable regulation in the meantime my role here is to serve as a custodian of the wealth of all of our stakeholders and i assure you that i will do my best during this transition period and to get the right professionals in place Thank you. We are now ready for questions. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchscreen telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Anyone who wish to ask a question, they may please press star and one. First question is on the line of Sandeep Tulsian from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, very good evening. Um, my first question is pertaining to the disclosure or the letter sent out by uh, Mr. Sandeep Nihal Gulkarni. Request to please unmute your line and proceed. Yeah, hi. Are you able to hear me? Okay my first question is pertaining to the letter sent out by Mr Nihal Kulkarni uh, last evening uh, so to exit uh, uh, the entire shareholding that is held by him and his entire family uh, which constitutes a large part of uh, Kirloskar Oils overall shareholding as well as of the holding company Kirloskar Industries uh, so would there be an intent by the promoters uh, to buy out some percentage of this shareholding uh, number one and is there a timeline uh, put towards 
or the seal of those shares. Okay, one, uh, this has just been mentioned yesterday, so it is too early to comment on who will buy the shares. I'm sure we all know that as insiders, they have to comply with the regulations and would for a certain period not be in a position to sell the shares. As mentioned in their letter, they have indicated that they will be willing to share their, sell their shares in one or more tranches over a period of time, the modalities of which are going to be worked out by them. Does that answer your question? Got it. No, that fairly answers, uh, given the constraints what are there around the disclosures. Um, second question is uh, pertaining to uh, the electric pumps and tillers business. Uh, it was mentioned that uh, some of the ramp up has been made in Optica Pipes and the newly acquired uh, ESVA pumps GV. Uh, so if we exclude these two entities, what has the base business grown by? And given the losses which we are doing currently, uh, what should be the break even levels in these two businesses we should be looking at? So, um... Uh, so, if I understood your question, Sandeep, you are talking about uh, LGM standalone number uh, um, as far as the pump business is concerned. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm a, yes. Uh, so, Mr. Agar, I'm talking about the segmental uh, electric pumps that is reported as 173 crores in yeah. the quarter, uh, which is grown 3% year on year. So, out of the 173, how much is new business, which is not there in the base, that is Optica and ESEA? And for this 173, uh, at what level uh, we should break even in this uh, business and uh, what is the road to uh, profitability going forward? So Optica, I will address your second question first. So Optica has a fairly low break even. So uh, most likely by the end of this year, we would be breaking even uh, about five to six crore of, five crore of uh, sale uh, per month is what is needed. Uh, and uh, ISWA anyway is a, uh, is a GV where uh, we are already making profit, uh, so it's a profitable business. Now coming to the first question, uh, so ISWA did a sale of about 24 crores, uh, just a moment. Yeah, this was it about 24 crores, which is basically to Coil and LGM, almost equal. and. Uh, Optica, uh, Optica has done a sale of uh, about uh, 20, Optica standalone is about again 24 crores. Out of this, roughly 50% is to external customers, about 12 crore of Optica is to internal. So 12, 12, 24, if you remove uh, uh, from uh, LGM, 12 crore of Optica and 12 crore of ISWA sales to Coel uh, and ISWA sales to uh, uh, LGM. So all put together about 36 crore will be, uh, 24 crore will be intra-group sales in okay. pump. And what would be the break-even for pumps if I exclude, say, this uh, uh, 24 crores from this 174 crores broadly? At 150 crore, at what level uh, should we start breaking even? GM was delivering profit, uh, as you know, um, uh, it was contributing about 6-7% uh, to beta. But for the last couple of quarters, because of input cost increases, uh, and there was a lag in, in passing on the input cost increase to the market, which has led to the deterioration in margin. Actually, it has slipped into losses. However, a number of steps have already been taken, and uh, we are also taking um, you know, price increases in uh, LGM. Uh, as we speak, in December, we have already uh, taken a, a price increase of about 2.5% in LGM and uh, we are about to take uh, another price increase in, in the current month. So our endeavor is that uh, we bring uh, LGM uh, into profitable territory uh, in this quarter itself. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is based on uh, the commodity price situation as we see today. Going forward, depending upon how, you know, commodity prices behave, uh, we will take additional measures. But uh, to, to, to answer your specific question, we are taking all the steps to bring back LGM into profitable trajectory from this quarter itself. Got it. And uh, one last question, if I may, uh, is pertaining to the new business plans. Uh, you know, we've highlighted three, four major areas, uh, one of them being uh, you know, the motors and the transformers on the electrical side. And a uh, second one is just pipes and cables. And third one is on the organic waste opportunity that we were wanted to capitalize on. Uh, so if you can highlight uh, what is the uh, timelines when these business segments should start contributing materially to revenue. Uh, if you can independently in each of these business segments highlight what kind of investments uh, would be required. 
uh, and uh, uh, you know any other changes in plans uh, in in whatever you know uh, the segments that I have mentioned. That's so uh, I will answer your last point first. Uh, there is no change in the strategy of the company. It is as it is as we what we have announced to the <coughs> investing community in the earlier quarters. Uh, uh, as far as wires, cables and pipes business, which is Optica right now, uh, it is a very, very asset-like business. There are no major capex uh, requirement over there. And we have significant runway available to scale it up to about 100, 120 crore rupees with absolutely negligible uh, you know, capital expenditure. So there it is taken care of. Uh, here pipes, we, we are talking about you know, uh, uh, column pipes. Column pipes. Uh, we are looking at column pipes only. And motors, we have uh, we have taken some tiny steps in LGM, uh, uh, but uh, you know still a lot of work needs to be done, uh, which Rahul will speak uh, in more in more granular details. And in Coel, our plans are afoot to launch uh, you know Coel branded uh, motors uh, very soon, maybe in quarter in this quarter or early uh, next quarter. Uh, and uh, what else? Uh, 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 WC. Yeah. So you can answer out. Uh, uh, so uh, on electric motors, uh, we should soon expect the product launch maybe this quarter, as Pawan said, maybe early next quarter. All the preparations with respect to the team building and uh, dealers, etc., is currently ongoing. So we expect it to be launched very soon. Uh, and it should contribute uh, a decent amount in the next uh, financial year. On OWC, it is already into the market, and in the next year, we have uh, again planned to contribute about uh, about 10, 15 crores uh, in that business. Uh, on the allied, Pawan already spoke. That is the tables, wires, and wires. So that's the current status. And on the uh, electric transformers for railways that we were planning to do. So railways transformers, as we have earlier said, it's a tender-based business uh, because of COVID. Uh, the tender flow from railways has been a little bit inconsistent. Uh, as soon as the tender flow normalizes, we will try and bid for those tenders. So this is tender-based, so we can't really say how much we'll be able to do. Uh, if the flow normalizes, we should <coughs> be able to uh, get in. But we are ready in terms of our back-end preparation uh, in participating that business. Got it. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. That's it for my Thanks. case. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Ravin Vitwani from SBI Mutual Fund. Yes. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, the question is on the exits of the top management. Uh, so there was a press release on uh, the CEO uh, exit. But uh, there was a news report that along with him, uh, the couple of other heads of the business, namely water management and uh, after sales, have also resigned. Could you confirm this? Uh, second, if you could also help us with the reason for such abrupt exit, normally we uh, see that there is a three to six month gardening of CEOs. Uh, and, and uh, this, this kind of abrupt exit is rarely seen in a uh, complete top management along with CEO going away, um, uh, kind of uh, uh, is very worrisome. So uh, uh, can you help us with the reason? Uh, what are your plans? Uh, how do you, uh, why, what time frame do we see a professional CEO as you highlighted? And uh, um, a, a kind of a little disturbing to see uh, a sudden uh, management exits and then promoter exits. If you could just throw more light, it will be uh, uh, really reassuring. Uh, so the uh, exit was for personal reasons, as uh, the resignation letters that have been filed with the stock exchanges uh, mentioned. And uh, as I mentioned before, we are currently already looking for a professional MD. I'd say the timeline is about six months. Could you confirm about the, the head of uh, water management and the head of after sales also resigning along with the CEO? Uh, hi, Bhavan. Uh, good evening. This is Arvind. Uh, uh, when you are mentioning to the head of uh, service, 
uh, I think this particular stuff was already in uh, pipeline for uh, more than a year because of his personal aspiration and uh, it was a proper informed and in fact uh, the head of service is already on boarded and it's a homegrown talent wherein this guy personally was involved in terms of creating a backup and he gave us a due course of time because he wanted to enter into his personal venture and if, if you know uh, he has not joined anywhere he actually has an aspiration for a very long to pursue his own business and the business was also like what uh, he wanted to do was he wanted to just share his knowledge base with the young generation what he has gained over the time in professional career so it was a uh, well planned and well supported and with the mutual respect of both both sides like the employee side as well as the organization side and head of cs is already on board which is a homegrown talent and the water management has the water management head business was uh, sudden and we will be looking for his replacement so like sure. so how do you plan to steady the ship with complete uh, uh, um, Indian, if you could just uh, give a bit more, uh, how are you planning? Because it's a very uh, uh, disturbing thing where the entire uh, CEO and the top management exit at the same point in time. Yeah. Sorry, so we have a strong second in line uh, in uh, in all of our businesses, in all of our business units, uh, even where we have strong leaders. So there's a second in line now. Today is uh, reporting, uh, you know, up into the business unit head and and into me. So that's how we're managing it. Sure. Okay, fine. Thank you for taking my questions. Thank you. Our next question is from Kiran Sebastian from Franklin Templeton. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Um, a couple of two questions from me. Yeah. Environment, especially for the power gen business. Kiran, you've lost you your touch up on the trends in. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, you are not. Uh, you are not clear. Uh, can you speak up, please? Yeah, it, it would be helpful if you could uh, touch up on the demand environment, especially uh, for the for the power gen and the uh, residential real estate and markets. And my second question is: uh, Is there a hard stop for uh, the equity investment into Arca? Uh, are you going to stop funding after a thousand crore, or is it is it open at this point? Uh, so, uh, Kiran, uh, very good evening and uh, thanks for joining the call. Uh, this is Arvin. Uh, I would just answer your first question and then I will request uh, my colleague Pawan to address your second question. But before I try and address your question, uh, I would just like to take this opportunity to give an overview, overall overview of the situation, which probably would address most of the questions as well as your questions also. Uh, so if I have to just look at the quarter three DG market, uh, the DG market uh, expected to report almost 14% growth year on year, which is a very positive sign. Though sequentially, uh, the quarter three has a degrowth of almost 200 basis points, uh, which we can discount primarily on account of because Q2 had a pent up demand coming in from Q1. So hence the Q2 base was like this strong, but if you look in isolation, quarter three has shown a very positive sign. And uh, when we look at the uh, Further outlook, in all possibility, FY22 overall market is expected to reach the pre-COVID level, which means like FY19, FY20 kind of stuff. And most of this growth is being fueled from the healthcare sector and well supported by the recovery of infra segment. Uh, while uh, we, we were uh, continuing to dominating position as far as the healthcare is concerned, and just to share one perspective, that quarter three was a time when we could uh, install 1,000 plus marks in terms of the pure healthcare infrastructure like O2 specific oxygen plant across the country and uh, this order board is growing very healthy and it is well spread across the country. It is not limited to a specific geography and all. Uh, and we, we could manage uh, our Q3 numbers while there was a 2% sequential degrowth vis-a-vis -vis the quarter two which I mentioned. And this was majority coming from the medium and high horsepower uh, segment, which is 40 kVA to up till like 625 kVA. Uh, though uh, in the quarter three itself, commodity continues to stay towards the upward. Uh, we may talk about the pig iron, aluminium, or, or even the related commodity. There was an increase. Uh, and if you all remember in uh, the quarter two, uh, July, we increased the price and uh, we were all hopeful that uh, it would benefit into the quarter three, but unfortunately, uh, it looks to be a 
catching up game for the commodity because the RM led inflation uh, of the quarter itself uh, was not enough to cover the quarter three. Uh, and as Pawan already mentioned that during the quarter three mid itself, uh, we again took the leadership position to come forward and we went ahead with a, another price increase. Uh, though it was a very risky call looking at the uh, once the market was showing uh, uh, forward looking growth, but then still uh, you always reach to a point when you uh, stop thinking of the volume. And we were very confident that the uh, others would also support and follow and we can come back to normal and which happened. I mean, immediately after price increase in the mid of quarter, it was followed by others also and uh, market has now normalized those prices. So that's the overall. Now, uh, your specific question was towards which sector has seen the growth. I think I covered it in my answer, though I'll just repeat it. Uh, it was well supported by the healthcare infrastructure and if you all remember in the early quarter three, uh, the anticipation of the pandemic uh, put all the hospital oxygen plant on the fast track and uh, we could capitalize on that opportunity to a large extent. Now I'll just uh, request Paman to answer your second question. Arka. Uh, yeah, Kiran. Uh, this is Paman Agrawal. Uh, as we have mentioned in earlier calls also that the board of COEL has uh, uh, you know, uh, confirmed an investment of a maximum of 1,000 crore as of now, and this is a calibrated approach that we have adopted. And we are, uh, the board of COEL is closely monitoring the performance of ARCA, and depending upon the performance, growth, profitability, and various other factors, uh, the uh, in amount has been put in. So as of now, it is restricted to 1,000 crore. Thank, thank you. Thanks, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to our participants, please press star and one if you wish to ask a question. We have a next question from Amit Shah from Antique. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Uh, uh, one question from my side with regards to the incremental price hikes that we are planning to take, uh, given that the cross margin uh, compression is still happening on the quarterly basis. So what sort of price hikes we are uh, planning to take in the uh, further quarters? And uh, uh, secondly, uh, even on the uh, agribusiness portfolio, if you can just highlight how the business is shaping up over there. Uh, so these are my two questions. Thank you. Um, so on the agri side, uh, we have taken in coil, I'll first talk about coil. So in coil, uh, on electric pump side, uh, um, from April till now, we have taken four price uh, increases, uh, about uh, close to 18 to 20% in total uh, in this period. Uh, as far as the diesel engine part is concerned, there also we have taken uh, three price increases uh, from uh, July to uh, February 22 which is close to about 10% uh, in, in diesel engine. Additionally, in diesel engine, we also sell spares and alternators. There also we have taken uh, price increase two, three times during the year. Uh, on LGM side, uh, just to let you know, uh, in the last 12 months, which is you know from November, December last year to, to now, uh, uh, there has been uh, continuous increases in, uh, in the input cost. And uh, we have taken close to 13 to 14 percent in total uh, price increase in LGM business, which is basically electric pump. And roughly four, five times we have taken actually increase. And uh, uh, one price increase we have taken um, uh, from the beginning of this month. And we are closely monitoring the input prices. And in case uh, they go in the same direction, then we would not hesitate to take further price increases in order to bring back the profitability. So this was on on the um, on the price rise uh, issue on uh, water management. Um, uh, uh, Arvind has already talked about the price rise uh, matter in case of PPS business. Uh, in farm mechanization, uh, where we deal with uh, tillers and weeders, there also uh, we have taken. If I see last January, January 2021 to now, January 2022, there have been. Four times we have taken price increase, but of course, our tiller, as you know, is uh, uh, the, the the cost increases are capped because uh, there is it's a subsidy led business. So uh, we have taken uh, price increases in case of retail market uh, in in tiller as well as in weeder. 
in our customer support business uh, there also in spares and tractor part oil there have been uh, you know two three times we have taken price increases uh, in, the, in the over last 9 10 months uh, uh, in industrial business also uh, we have taken uh, price increases with our oem customers most of the oem customers in fact all of the OEM, oem customer in the last uh, 9 10 months so there has been uh, price increase decisions across businesses however there are time lags in some cases and also the gap between the input cost increase versus uh, the, the the price increase which has been passed on to the market there has been some delta which has uh, impacted the margins but uh, we are we, we take cognizance of the profitability of the company very seriously and uh, whatever actions are required to be taken will be taken uh, very quickly and it will be moving in line with uh, the input cost increases going forward yeah, yeah sir uh, thank you so much uh, sir on the demand side if you can highlight you know with this uh, kind of price increases have we seen uh, demand tapering off or you know demand continues to remain intact despite the price increases so how the demand is panning out uh, both in the power gen and uh, uh, the farm mechanization side of the business so, so uh, post this price increase uh, do we see any demand tapering off yeah if I yeah, so I'll answer the water management side and then probably Arvind can answer the uh, PPS side. On the water management side, uh, we are definitely seeing some slowdown in the industry. It is not, it has got nothing to do with the price increases that we are taking and hence, you know, there is an impact on our sales. That is not the case. But generally, every, uh, you know, uh, sector as such is, is seeing some slowdown and uh, the others are also seeing this slowdown. Other players in the segment also seeing this impact. Also, as I mentioned in my opening remarks uh, during this year, uh, extended rains and floods in certain parts of the country has also impacted uh, the the, uh, the demand situation. But uh, you know, as of now, uh, February March onwards the season starts, so we are all geared up for that, and the the green shoots are visible. So we are hoping that you know uh, February and and March onwards uh, there will be strong recovery in demand. And uh, if I have to just add for the uh, PPS business. Uh, in the domestic energy market, uh, price increase as we did towards the mid of the last quarter, which has already settled, and uh, good news is that most of the order board is with the new price. Uh, there is there is no impact uh, in terms of the demand coming down, but only thing is there is sometimes shift uh, between you taking the lead and somebody just following you. So there is some uh, bit of uh, business shift, but otherwise there is no impact uh, as far as the demand is concerned. And as I mentioned in my summary also, that uh, overall market looks to be very positive and uh, in all probability, FY22 would reach to the pre-COVID level. Uh, though in industrial, uh, demand is led by other factors, not the price, because our price increase is uh, not like uh, in absolute uh, equal percentage to the FG because there's a lot which goes into the uh, final goods of those OEMs. Sure, sir. This is really helpful. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you. Our next question is from Ashwani Sharma from Anand Rathi. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. So my first question is on the market share. If you can please help me with the uh, market share on the uh, LHP, MHP, and HHP, and uh, how it has changed in the last uh, uh, over the last one quarter. Uh, so uh, uh, during my commentary, also I said that uh, Q3, though there was a sequential degrowth uh, from the quarter two, but uh, we at Coel we uh, maintained our number, and it was. Primarily supported by the medium and high horsepower in the range of 40 kVA to 625 kVA. And if I have to speak about the specific segment, uh, because this is the segment, this is the node which uh, specially addressed to the healthcare and the infra. And that's where the maximum growth was coming and uh, we were the one who were leading this growth. Uh, if I have to speak about the overall market, the final numbers are yet to be out, but from the flash, it looks like that uh, market has uh, grown over the last year. Uh, and uh, we have been participating as a leader in that growth. But the further details, like who lost it, who gained it, we'll have to probably wait for some more time by the time the final release comes in. Okay, and also on the uh, farm mechanization side, I mean the tailors and the weeders, how, how's our market share over there? Uh, can you repeat your question, please? 
Yeah, similar question on the farm mechanization side. I mean, tillers and the uh, weeders. How is the market share over there, sir? No, so in uh, tillers, the the overall industry size is also very limited. Some fifty fifty five thousand uh, tillers is the market size, and uh, uh, as you we all know, VST is the market leader. Uh, we are uh, between number two and number three, so uh, about fourteen to sixteen percent. Uh, Weeder is a smaller market but a better margin uh, space, and uh, we have a complete range of products available to cater to the demands. Uh, in this segment, and our weeder is weeder offerings are showing very good traction in the market, and uh, it's a small segment, but it is uh, we have just made tiny steps in this direction, and we are expected to consolidate our position in this particular segment. Yeah, thank you. My uh, second question is on the large engines. I think uh, this segment, obviously, it is a small segment, but then I've been uh, noticing that over the last four or five quarters there has been degrowth. So, if you can tell us that uh, what is really happening there and uh, what is the outlook, you know, that we see. Okay. So, in large engine business, as you are aware, uh, we deal with a lot of government customers, you know, uh, you know, PSUs and uh, you know, uh, government of India. And also, there is a uh, other segment where we uh, basically marine and defence, you know, this is where we deal with. And uh, then we have a space and service business also. Over the last uh, probably four to six quarter, as you actually noticed, uh, there has been some slowdown in terms of decision making or execute or allowing us to execute the order. And uh, while we have a very healthy order board, about upwards of 150 crore as we speak, but the execution of these projects are not happening because of the delays from the government side. You know, some of our customers. Now it is opening up. Quarter four is looking much more brighter, and we are quite hopeful. This order book of 150 crore. A large part of that order book will get executed in in the next financial year, and as we all know, it's a it's a, a decent margin business, so that gives uh, extra support to the overall profitability of the company. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks for the question. Yeah. Thank you. Our next question is from Sandeep Tulsiya from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, just one follow up I had on the industrial segment. Uh, when we look at the industrial segment sales, uh, you know, on a year-on-year -year basis, they have declined uh, despite all the price hikes that you spoke about that has been ruled out. Uh, so if you could break it up between, uh, you know, the construction equipment and the tractors, how each of these parts have done and uh, what is the outlook going forward? Yeah, sure, Sandeep. In fact, uh, good you brought up this question because I missed it in my brief. Uh, if you would have noticed the industry from an FG perspective, uh, the earth moving and the tractor industry has shown uh, a, a slowdown in the quarter three, uh, wherein the construction side of the equipment uh, uh, stayed positive. And we being very strong in uh, construction equipment side, uh, hence our impact was minimized to the range of 5%. But if you look at the overall uh, construction equipment or off-highway industry, probably there the uh, impact is much higher. So we would say that from our perspective, it was very, very positive. Uh, but just to answer your question and add to your question, uh, whatever degrowth uh, we have seen is primarily from the tractor and the earth moving side. Can you share some numbers, please? Uh, so you, you, you are, you're looking for a specific sale number in the segment wise? Yes, sir. I have to break up this 173 uh, odd crore phase yeah, uh, yeah. between construction and tractors. How much would that split be, and what is the growth rate in each of these sub segments? Okay, in tractor, uh, we uh, degrew by 39% year on year, and quarter on quarter also more or less similar degrowth. Uh, okay. Now, on other than tractor, which is construction equipment, uh, off highway, etc., there we saw a growth of 7% for quarter three year on year, and quarter three quarter on quarter sequentially we grew uh, by 27%. Got it. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks. And and the other factor that was impacting it was we all know the semiconductor issue, and uh, this all is fueled by the uh, BS4, the non-tractor. That was also okay. one of the factor in terms of the availability. Uh, this is for your uh, off highway equipment, is it? Off highway equipment. Got it. Thank you. Thank you.
ladies and gentlemen that would be our last question for today on behalf of antique stock broker that concludes this conference thank you all for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.